Yeah, so I didn't, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. Uh, when I was about 14 years old, one of my friends kept on trying to convince me to come out to her youth group with her. So she she kept on bugging me, and I didn't want to go because I thought Christians were, were lame, so I didn't want to be associated with Christians. But when I got to the youth group, it was a very conservative youth group, and in my heart, just because I felt so unloved, just, just because of my upbringing and my past and, and things that I did, uh, I decided in my heart that I wanted to be received by these people by any means necessary. So what I started to do was I... I I observed what a Christian was and, and what it, all that I thought that a Christian was at that time was someone who just did good things. So I, I decided that I was going to pretend to be a Christian. So I stopped doing all the bad stuff that I was doing and I just started doing all the good stuff that I thought that I should be doing. I tried to follow the Bible and do all these things and I, I lived a very le- very legalistic life, very separate from a relationship with God. And I did this for about two years and... um so in grade 12, I remember we were sitting in a, in a small group at the time and we had a, we had this kind of cell group and we got talking about spiritual gifts. And again, this was a very conservative church. So we were going around the circle talking about what gifts we felt like God had given us. And so people were like, well, I feel like God's given me a spiritual gift of mercy or hospitality. And there was a new kid there at the time. And he said, well, I've been given a gift of tongues because I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And when he said that, something sparked inside of my heart, and it was a it was a hunger for for authenticity of who God was. So I said to him, I said, "Do it." I said, "I want to see it right now." And I put this kid on the spot, and he was pretty young, so it took him some time. But he started coming around each of us and praying over us, and he he'd lay his hands on our head and praying in tongues over and over us. And as he did, the power of Jesus slammed down on us. And for about three and a half hours, all six of us guys were on the ground wailing uncontrollably in an encounter with Jesus. And I remember in that moment, just because of the things that I did and my upbringing of what I came out of, I, at that point in my life, I didn't really feel loved and I didn't feel received. But in that, in that very moment, I, I understood for the first time that Jesus loved me with all of his heart. So in that moment, I, I, fell, head in he, I, I fell head over heels in love with Jesus And I I literally became obsessed with him. Like every day after school or work, I would just drop off my bag and I would go and walk with Jesus for six hours and learn to hear his voice. And I started cultivating a relationship with him Uh, on my days off. I I wouldn't even get out of bed. I would lay in bed for eight to 12 hours, just soaking in the presence of God because I was just so hungry for for an authentic, intimate relationship with him. I started getting a compassion just, uh, just for the sick because I was spending so much time with the father. And as God was stirring this compassion in my heart to, for the sick, I, I started stepping out in faith because Mark chapter 16 says, to those who believe they will lay hands on the sick and they'll see them healed. It, it doesn't say to those who are apostles or prophets or evangelists, but anyone who believes in Jesus will lay hands on the sick and see them healed. So out of my secret place of spending so much time with God, I started stepping out time and time again, laying hands on the sick on the streets, in the marketplace, in the coffee shops. And eventually I started seeing these different breakthroughs of Jesus just breaking out and loving on people in the same way that I was loved on by him.